Hello and welcome as it is the uh, 16th day of September 2019. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. Let's uh, calculate some Fibonacci amongst the uh, gold market. I did so recently on silver. Now it's time to do it for gold. And uh, I got the daily chart shown and uh, right now as far as price action is concerned, it's uh, I'm hanging in there resisting the 18 average of lows. I don't see that as showing weakness at the lows because we are in an uptrend and it's consolidating from the most recent high less than and around that of 15 and two thirds. It's only came down to a hair below the 1500 handle and now it's just a little bit above it. So just because it didn't find support at the 18 average of lows, it found support near it. And it did so at that of 1493. In short term, we can see it consolidating uh, just a little bit. Whether I'll get into very short term uh, of, within such, that all depends on how nice. I, prob I probably will. I don't know yet. But what I want to do is say, okay, we've had a run higher. Now, one thing you can do is you can do Fibonacci from this low and this high. And I'll do so quickly, but I don't want to spend too much on this one. As I can see that there is a low that was hit a few times at around uh, 1270, which, which is a good number to choose. Maybe even go 1268 to be more precise. But if I choose 1268 to 1270, my calculations in the end are just going to be microscopically different, which make no difference because when I place these numbers, it's always in that general area as it is anyway. But as it goes with the $15, uh, $15, $1,565 high. I can see that there's a 76.4% at 1489, which just happens to be a pierce below 1500. 1444, well, if 1489 is passing this effectively, I probably am going to have to give credentials if it breaks down to reach that of, well, that figure. For now, as, as we take a look at this level, it didn't find support piercing below. Oh, but most certainly piercing above. Well, there's two, two ways I look at that. Number one, why does it always have to pierce below? But if it interesting, or if it usually, and at that interestingly does, and I say interestingly because if I just happen to pop a line randomly at some number below it like that, if it's going to appear as either a little above or below, it should do it over so a large sample size of periods about the same or close to the same as each side. Sort of like when you flip heads and tails or coins for such, they should come up approximately even on just randomness. But it also means maybe this run here is not over. Maybe we resist this 18 lows, come down, and we break below this and have a new low, maybe around 1473, and then we microscopically pierce below it. And well, that's another way of looking at it as well. But I really don't want to focus on uh, that as the level of Fibonacci. I want to scroll back and go through some periods because I look at this breakout low and I'm thinking, okay, well, I, I could use this low, but which break low do I want to use? I got another one here at 1186. That one seems nice. So we had a good rally from above it before, as I can see it went from 1360 down. And I'll just scroll back some more and see, well, if I'm going to use this pierce low, well, obviously uh, this one's a total no, but why not this pierce low at the 1050 handle? And most certainly, I'll never use this one. Because if you're going to use this one, just use either one of these two. Or, or, or the one, of course, in 2016. And amongst it, we will next use that. But if I use my Fibonacci calculator, which I next will, it's not going to help me too much because of how I programmed it. I've only programmed it to give me the six variables in which I show, but I'm just going to try to remember this high, which looks like 1050. I'll just go with that. All right. So, as I see, I've wrote it to put in these four numbers and then the up and down target when uh, needed. So, I'm going to change the low from 1268 to 1050. So now I can see, well, that 1444, well, now that coincides with the 76, 1424. That's all I got. And then lower numbers below that, if, of course, there would happen to be a deeper retracement from this point. And I haven't 
calculated what these numbers are going to do. But what numbers are after 76? And I think it's 85 and then like 90% and that's what I calculated with silver and that's what I'm going to do within this and see how these numbers play out. Again, I haven't calculated so I don't know how well these numbers above 1424 are going to play out. If they happen to play it like whatever, it's that they look great or they just, oh my goodness, they they found support here, it resisted it there, it congested so nicely there. It'll only be luck if it consistently does it. So I'll get my spreadsheet tool up and put in, this is what I had for silver. Before I used the low of 1430, I'm going to switch that to 1050. And now we have the highs, is it 1560 I believe? Yeah. I think that's what I used. 1565. Even that $5 wouldn't make much of a difference here. So a 50% move, as I can see, this number divided by that works out to 1.49 from the bottom so far to the most recent high. So about 1424 comes in that of 1476. And when we look at this, there's a couple things I can realize. Number one, that as I mentioned, if it has that next move and pierces below, well, that might be where we pierce it below to, towards that number. But we haven't gotten there yet, so it hasn't done anything. And I'm really not going to be able to use this time frame too well for that of... Uh, the one minute time frame because I'm just going to quickly show you what the short term looks like. And because it's like COMEX based, I miss hours in the gaps. So the other market that I have, well, it doesn't have them. And I actually can see what happens at four in the morning and at five or 7.30 p.m. Where this one we can see in here how we have, I guess maybe it does. I guess that's just the weekend gap. You know what, maybe, no, I will use this, it will work. And we got about 1509, a little under that, as the number above 1476, which represents a 9% down Fibonacci move. And from this high, and really from this high as well, it just, when it came down here, it never hit this level. What has the market done? It pierced above it here, twice, as it did so, on, and this is a three hour time frame. It did so September 5th at the nine o'clock period. It did so again at the uh, five or three or six o'clock time frame. And then as it came down and actually did support it, but only really that through tiny price and tiny time or short price and short time, because we can see this green candle here went up to 15 14 or 5 bucks higher. And it was only a period that it stayed there because the next period it broke down, resisted piercing below. Another pierce less. Failed breakout occurring above the Fibonacci line on the 6 o'clock session as it managed to get above the 18 average of highs just above it. But as we can see, it, it did support the 18 lows, which, which is great, but after resisting the highs, which it needs to get above it to resume this move that it stated it was going to do, well, it needs to get above, continue to support the ET, and that's what it didn't do. It uh, came back down, and then, of course, the gap move, and now it's just consolidating and staying within this level. So, therefore, since the last little bit, or as it was really since uh, the, this failed rally here on September the 9th, it's been nothing more than congesting amongst this Fibonacci level. Looking at it via the hourly, we can see more of a such. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the next level above the 1509, which represents about uh, 1530 and a half, or that of a 5.57 Fibonacci correction. And it was only luck. Only that of luck that it would do such a thing. Because... It came down, I mean, you, you can see it supporting it, then you break below it. Of course, the pierce uh, above, which normally like this, pierce extra, but like to see both sides of the fence, if you will. 
getting a butt or whatever. But you resist it and then resist it again here on this failed breakout. And on the monthly chart, I have these lines in. They represent the Fibonacci from the highs at about 1920. What do we got in here? Uh, 1920, 94, 1921, and these lows in at uh, 1046 and a half. Let me just see how accurate these are. I'm going to put the exact numbers in. I'm going to put the low of 10, because it was a long time ago, maybe even a, over a year ago, when I put these lines in here. So I'm going to put the exact, and I'll just see exactly, because I got 132107. Now, I might have just put something close to that number, too. So I'm not, I'll throw that away, but I'll be curious. So I'm going to put those numbers in, and that will give us the numbers that are higher than 1669 as well. And I'll talk a little bit about what that would mean, because this is long-term Fibonacci, and we're even going more long-term, because, yes, we'll be calculating it from this point to this high as well. But for now... The low in at uh, that of uh, 1046.54. And putting in 1050, I mean, it all works, but if you just want to see what the exact numbers have to be, and that's exactly what this exercise is, yeah, then yeah. But, put, but putting in 1050, that works. Then 1920, that works as well. Even 1900, that's fair enough. So the exact number on here would be uh, 1920.94. The differential of the move from that low is 83.55%. And for the long term, that's not that much at all. Even in the gold's traditional standard markets. So 1523.27 is what I have on the 61.8% number. And we can see it's 1522.56 here. So, you know what? Close enough. And that's the whole point of when you pick those numbers, whether I get 1522, 1532 in that area, it's relatively going to be the same. But what it does mean to me, as far as what these other numbers mean, using very long term analysis, but then going to these microscopic numbers, it means they, each time you go through a number getting past this uh, 76.4, or 23.6, and then they just become so sh more, more, more short term when we leave the 6. So 17.58 is that. If I go like this, I can just copy and paste this and get some more Fibonacci numbers. So we'll go up to 17.58 then. And if we look at the percentage move on each one, or another way of doing it, equals this divided by this minus one will give me the percentage move. And then we'll just put this in percent with two decimals. So 15.4% higher and then nine and then these numbers shrink majorly each time as we can see. So they really become that of short term. So 1905 you're uh, you only had a half a percent move from the last point. The next one at the top would be lower. So I'm going to remove this. If you are interested in these numbers, you can write them down. Who knows how they'll play in the short term in the situation of breaking above the 16 and two thirds level, which would activate these short term levels. But let's change this low because it was 250 before. And I'm just going to put 250 even in when I'm doing the uh, Fibonacci calculation. So from the lows in 2002, the market has went up not quite eight times, but a little greater than seven and two thirds. Let's look at these key numbers. 544, we don't even need to play with these low numbers. That's so passe. 1187, well, we, we recently bought them 1050, so we pierced below that number. And really in between both uh, the uh, these two in here. 1426 was a level we've just managed to get above because we're uh, now over 1500. And in looking at 1426, this was an area where, what, what was this consolidation in here? Working out to be this level of resistance and looking at it on the daily. 
And if I analyze this level, as far as a, a point of resistance from where we came, it becomes a little interesting to do one of the things that Fibonacci normally does, because it really hasn't been resistance. I have the 1321, which most certainly was. And then you could have said, you know what, a more accurate number would have been 1360. Yeah, most certainly it would have been. But this number was still accurate. But now we talk about for this level, how was 14? I mean, it wasn't accurate at all. That That's not a Pierce below. That was these all these lows in here. That was noticeably below. So that was a terrible level for it. But you could say, oh, back in here it was resistance. Uh, yeah, well, actually, yeah, I guess that would mean a little bit. But also I see this as is, if I'm in a situation where I come up to this level here and have this pause and it's lifting higher, well, that's telling me that we're having no resistance there or, or very little of such. And in those cases, then I expect a concise move to next key level. And that comes out of the 1598 handle, which is an interesting spot. It's like right in between these levels. It's, it's not really a pierce above this, so I really don't want to put too much focus on such for that low. Even though it uh, is a very key low, I can find even a, another key low. And I'm going to go back to, well, before I was born, and I was born on this barely, though, on this low, when it was 100. But the, I don't have data for what happened before. And, and price was in double digits before then. So I got a spreadsheet here which says price is going back to January of 1968. This is gold, this is silver, this is the ratio. So I'm just going to go equal minimum of this for enough frozen see it was thirty four dollars and seventy seven point five cents so thirty four three quarters works out fine and now we get some of these numbers again key numbers the thirty eight and the sixty or the the sixty one eight and the thirty eight two were one sixty and four fifteen and all I really can say is coinciding because as this was retracing, it was retracing from this high. So we'll get back to that 1920 in just a little bit. But for now, how did it retrace back then when it hit a high? And well, let me figure out what my high was. And I know it was January of 1980. And I got 843, I got about 850, the high that they represent on the chart. It comes in at 873. So I'm going to use 875 as the high. And the move is a 25x move from the low to that peak. And their key numbers, which are these two in here, represented... Two hundred and fifty-five dollars and one nineteen. So basically, two fifty and one twenty. And what this tells us via that of the chart, well, one twenty wasn't even close to being touched. And that two fifty-two low, I mean, microscopically piercing above it. And I suppose if I reduce the Fibonacci down to like this lower end, then this Fibonacci line, well, it would lower as well. But it pretty much it did come back to what was a thirty-eight point two percent correction to this high. After that, we see the number in at around 408, which represented that of, uh, what well, was this, 0 0.236, 0 0.764, or 23%, of course, from the lows of uh, down below there. So that was around 408. I'm just going to approximately put the numbers in here. As we can see, it consolidated here, it topped in this range, just doing what it normally does. But 550, the next one, as the level after that. And among such, after leaving and falling below it in 1981, 
it twice was a little close to reaching it, once here in 82 in this high, and again in 1987-88. But never again until here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the time frame, remove it from the three monthly. I think I'll go with the daily, actually. See what it looked like. If the daily doesn't work, we'll see the weekly, but we'll see right now. And it will be that of the daily term. And as we can see, after getting above this area, it supported it piercing above the 410, but as it came up to the uh, 550 area, that was an area it most certainly consolidated this run higher for a little bit at, after the 550 handle, came about 655, which is put a line in there. We can see it was just really consolidated a little bit below it for a period of time, but not for much. Overall, it was a situation of not having resistance. Because back in here, we had the run-up come to this point. Uh, I mean, this this is, th that, that's not even, I don't even count that really much as a hair below. That's a lot, I mean, that's a big, good hair chunk below, whatever. And then coming up to this point, a clear, decisive break that came above it. It ended up being that of a decent pierce above it. And this did go up to 726. Well, what's the next number above that? Well, it's 731, which is just a bit higher than that. And technically, this high pretty much is 731. If I try to find 731 in there, there we have it. So it doesn't find resistance at this level. It comes up to the 731, pretty much tops it right there supports and then resists this level and then has a concise move right to the low, barely piercing below. And here we are in 2006, resisting this level, piercing above it on one, two occasions, almost trying to get there, definitely a failed break it in the attempt to hit it a third time. Failing to pierce, really failing to get to the Fibonacci level here, but resisting it one more time, this time perfectly and then having its break above that. So now you're seeing this statement says, oh, next key level. Well, that would have came in at 783. But now we're starting to see these uh, numbers become very small in the percentage moves. So this is where you're like, okay, yeah, really short term. Now we're focused on taking out the high and starting to have new highs there after the fact. But we'll put the 783 line in and see what happens. And what I'll do is I'll just put a line in like right here and I'll edit it. And type in 783 and just see what happens as we move forward. Well, we see how it broke above. It came back to its area. It didn't support it, but it kind of, it held and stayed above it. That's when I say holding and staying above. This is an exact picture for how I mean what it looks like. Because it technically went below it had a good leg, resisted it, barely higher lowing it or matching it, and then now getting above it. So that's holding and staying above that line, supporting it once again and congesting within it for a good period of time as we mentor into 2007 and continuous major support at the 650 now. And then we get to 730 with support, not really resistance, only for a day or so. It found resistance on that of uh, September 18th and then even paused it on September the 19th. But after that, it broke it the next day, coming back to it on September the 25th of 07, and then lifting higher. And then that was the 731 we had before. 783 I put in, well, it got above that number. And as I was mentioning, these become very short-term levels, and you're talking about making it to... Uh, those key points, those, the key high now, 850, well, that was what the previous high happened to be. So I'm just going to just move this to this area here. And what ended up happening here is you resisted old high and you microscopically made new highs, but this was doing so, of course, during the, uh, right before the financial collapse of everything. But it looked like the gold market was ready to get going. It had its resistance, a nice move above, coming back to the previous high area. And then, of course, as this was going on, well, 
it had to take its fall, but everything was falling, and this happened to just come back down, congesting nicely at the 730. But really, that's it for that Fibonacci, because once it broke this resistance and left it, and it really did leave it as supporting it the whole time here, from, well, really the break above it, leaving the 730 area in September of 07, so the whole period of September of 2007, all the way to the break of this level, was congesting at previous high and stating, hey, I want to break convincing, convincingly previous key resistance from 1980. And thus, we can see that the resistance it established here, a barely over a thousand, well, it stated back in October of 2009 that it uh, was ready to take it out. And considering we've never seen the prices at this level, albeit close at 1050, it was successful in that statement. Because as it goes, within, in summary and conclusion, not summary, in conclusion, is there was that previous high in here. There was that congestion, congestion period, and there we can see the break off, a huge nice move to one leg higher. Not coming back to where we came from in here. And this is interesting when I look at stuff like this, that when you have moves like this, and it doesn't do that and it lifts off, then this could be an explosive, explosive move. Now in finishing off Fibonacci again to this 1920 high now from the lows not seen, but that $35 low in the 1920 high, put this in and this is why I feel nobody can cover Fibonacci on these markets even anywhere near as close to me but that's just my opinion I think I'm very damn good at this okay so I mean I don't think I need to calculate really any much much more here but we're the, just go through the levels I don't think I need to look at the charts too much we've seen 750 1069 that was that uh, where it came from that was certainly was a key level 1337 and 1535 when we look at the 1535, well, that's where we've been hot topping recently. Our current top this quarter is 1566, so it's already pierced above that. Before that was 1337. And I don't know how good your eyes look, but my eyes tell me that that was, yeah, that was part of that resistance in here, too. So things working out very well. And we're at the points now when we look at these percentage moves on a play that was 55 times higher and that's really a tiny number when you consider the uh, how the currency has been rolling over the last many years now other markets have done but it was 157 percent just to go from the 38.2 to the 61.8 then 79 percent move and here we are taking a 14 to it took us a four almost 15 percent for us to get to 15 35 it takes only 9% to get to 1672. So now these levels are becoming very short term. And if you're really concerned about even a few more of these other numbers, I can copy and paste them. And there you have it. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.